Hi y'all, I'm just inviting Jacqueline on real quick, but I'm excited to talk to her today about reframing. Hey Jacqueline. Hey. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Very good. A little bit chilly, but starting to warm up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm. It's like really cold today in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, it's coming. Yes, it is coming. <laughs> how are you excited to have you on this is amazing to have you pop on and everything everything's been going good just bouncing in and out of um classes and had a wonderful halloween weekend got to go to a retreat and everything so it was awesome oh fun yeah that's great yay so i'm excited to talk to you Mm mm-hmm if y'all don't know Jacqueline, she is like the queen of figuring out, <laughs> working around difficult situations and like reframing how to think about working as an artist or creative mm-hmm. and also at just like trying to reframe different opportunities. So mm-hmm. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on those topics. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi, friends that are joining. Hello. So yeah, um, I guess I'll just start with my name is Jacqueline. Um, I'm an artist, a theater artist, and I'm an artist mentor. Um, I run coaching programs. I do creative strategy and creative direction for projects. Um, I do all kinds of things. Um, Yeah, I'm an artist in the sense that I have my own practice which is heavily influenced by theater and writing, et cetera. Um, and then I also help other folks like Lauren <laughs> um, figure out how to take everything that they know how to do, right? Um, and every all the skills and talents that they have um, to build and create a creative and artistic life that feels really good for them. Um, yeah, I would say that that's, that's, that's who I am. That's what I do. Um, and I think... Okay, so talking about um, the different parts and uh, like of ways of reframing opportunities. So I feel like the the most um, difficult thing for artists to do is to figure out in this state of um, how do I make money with art, right? Do I want to make money with art? I think would be the first thing, right? It's like asking yourself that question, yeah. right? Because it's been programmed in us that that is what, maybe what you should want or whatever. Um, and that's not necessarily true, right? You don't have to make money from your art if you don't want to. But if you decide that you want to, there could be quite a journey to getting to that place, right? Because mm-hmm. of all of the barriers that we have in our lives, right? Um, You know, in our industries, barriers in our industries, um, barriers socially, right? Um, Barriers health-wise, all of these different things, right? That make it hard to do the most vulnerable thing that you can do um, for money, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? (laughs) So um, I think what, I encourage a lot of artists that I work with and creatives that I work with to do is figure out, you know, the steps and the understanding that this is going to be a journey, right? And figuring out the steps to get to that end point of whatever that dream goal looks like of making money with your art, right? So knowing that it's going to take a little bit, knowing that like there is not an overnight you know, quick fix solution. Um, but building a really intentional idea of what that looks like, what that endpoint. Keeps going out. I don't know why. Hello. Making small steps to make that happen. So, Mm -hmm. um, I think like, Right. Getting out of this idea that like, oh, if I just do this one thing or if I create my website this one way or if I make this one networking connection or if I take this one course or if I do this one workshop, then all of a sudden I can make money as an artist. Right. Like that is not necessarily true. And it's also not going to build to a sustainable right business. Um, Exactly. 
which is the biggest thing. Um, it, it takes some real work around <laughs> yourself um, and it, around your creative practice and process and working within your industry, whatever, right? So asking yourself tough questions yeah. um, and figuring out what that end goal looks like and then knowing that there's gonna be some small steps to get there. So to build to that bigger goal. Um, so yeah, do you want me to keep going? Like, yeah, <laughs> I can keep going. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and like for me, I know when I first started working with you, I was having a lot of issues because I was spreading myself so thin mm -hmm. with volunteer positions and stuff like that. And you started helping me sort of look at those and reevaluate where I was expending energy. And mm -hmm. even though I love those opportunities, just like really, really weighing the benefit, whether I was actually gaining anything from it, whether I was learning something, whether it was monetary or whether mm -hmm. I was even creating a legacy and like building something for the next generation. So that was huge for me. That's great. Yeah. I think that there's this myth that we have to say yes all the time, right? Like we're told in art school or in any other, you know, um, kind of educational background, right? That like being a, being an artist or being like a successful artist means that you have to say yes to every opportunity, to every event, to every volunteer thing, to every, like whatever, right? That like the yes is going to lead to more. And I actually think that that's not true. <laughs> I actually think that, that, the more no's you you say will actually lead to the kind of life that you want to live as an artist and will get you closer to the opportunities like you're speaking about and the um you know collaborations jobs commissions whatever that looks like that actually really like feed you you know as as an artist um and also could feed you literally right like mm -hmm. um and so yeah i i think that that's such a uh significant discernment that we have to make um oh yes totally yeah i was gonna say that as well um yes yeah, so i practice in so many art mediums and i also do digital art and i was like there's so much i know but i still feel lost right so i think getting to like again starting from that question right of like do i want my my art to make me money um I think that's a like tr very tricky, hard thing for folks. Um, and then breaking it down too, to like, there's so many different things that artists know how to do. And right. so this is what I talk about when I talk about this idea of um, precious work, right? Precious work versus creative work. So if you look at your skills, if you look at your mediums, if you, if you look at everything that you know how to do, that doesn't mean that you have to make money with everything that you know how to do. Right. So if there are certain practices or if there's certain mediums or there's certain skills that you really love and you feel really precious about and you hold them really close, you can choose not to engage those in a particular way, right? When bringing in income. Um, or you can decide to make an offering in the world or to um, create something for the world that still holds boundaries to that and, and, and keeps it precious to you, mm -hmm. right? So choosing, for example, to say like, I don't know, if you're a printmaker, like I'm only gonna do one project a month for you know, for money, right? Or something like that, which gives you the space and the time to keep that thing really precious right. to, to do all the things that we want to do about it, right? Like to obsess yeah. and to ruminate and to like whatever. And like, that's like, there's permission for you to do that, right? Whereas like creative work can, can really tap into the creative fun side of your brain, it can tap into like your outlook as an artist, but it doesn't necessarily have to be stuff that you hold so close. So if you have, you know, certain skills like digital art making, for example, or certain skills like I know that you have, Lauren, of project management, right? Of consulting, of things like that, that can be very creative. It, you can figure out ways to kind of take those skills and have, um, money or energy or whatever coming in from those um that doesn't feel so precious and like holy right um 
Yeah. So for me, my precious work is, is, is theater. All right. My precious work is writing. That's my precious work. Right. My creative work is this business, mm -hmm. you know, and it allows me to go like the creative work will always be on the shelf and I can take it down and I can change it and I can figure out what works best for me and I can, you know, whatever. Um, and the precious work is always going to be like in the heart, right. It's always going to be something that I want to do. And, I can, I'm allowed to be really picky about it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's been a part of your journey too, Lauren, is figuring oh, yeah, out sure. for yourself, right? I know like teaching, for example, is a great creative work side for you. Um, but your commission work will, is probably more precious, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that distinction too, I think is, can be really helpful and important. I really recommend the exercise. I think like so many of us are, completely unaware of how much talent and skill we do have and how much we can yes. offer the world because we are artists, right? Like, and you know, I mean, artists are great communicators. Artists are great problem solvers. Artists are great project managers. Artists are great at, um, like, at getting into like the nitty gritty in a group setting and collaborating, you oh, know? For sure. So many great skills and I always suggest to folks to like sit down and write like literally just keep going and keep writing a list of everything that you know how to do and be really 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 specific about it so not just like I can direct a play right but what are the things that that go into directing a play right or I don't know I can do punch needle or something, right? Okay, but what are the what are the 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 skills that go into punch needling, right? Or I can, I don't know, whatever that I, I don't know if I can come up with any more examples on top. Or I can like arrange flowers. Okay, great. But what goes into arranging a beautiful thing of flowers? Like get really, really, really specific. Mm -hmm. Then look at that list and you will your brain will explode with the amount of opportunity there is just in your skills yeah. um i really yeah I, I really encourage everyone that is that kind of is starting out on this journey to do something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. that i know that that has definitely helped me a lot because i thought that teaching was going to be my only option and i because i did and have been dealing with so much chronic pain, I knew that working with commissions and art handling wasn't necessarily going to be my best bet as far as mm. where I was going to be putting my energy. So trying to build that sustainable practice, observing some of the things that I was really skilled in, and then even just making mistakes, like trying things and then <laughs> like, like, <laughs> The whole graphic design thing. I love doing graphic design, but I labor over it. It's a, you know, it's very much a labor of love for me to make mm -hmm. these designs. And I'm not one of those people that can just like quickly turn over a design. Yeah, yeah. So it was really difficult for me. And then I met you and a lot of things started shifting, a lot of like shadow work and personal like diving deep into what my personal needs were because I was so wrapped up in making life easier for everybody else and making everybody else happy and stuff like that so mm -hmm. trying to like know what my body needed what my passions needed and mm -hmm. then how I could provide the most help to others because that's what I'm really led to do is mm -hmm. share and further art making and historic practices and stuff so that was one of the huge things that I definitely learned how was to like create more time and like say no to say yes <laughs> <laughs> you giving me that permission was like it was a light bulb going off for sure Oh, that's great. And I, yeah, and I think, you know, when we're talking about contributing, right, when we're talking about, like, where we shine, um, I think that, you know, the world needs us <laughs> to be 
be okay first, right? Like the world needs us to, to take care, to have boundaries, to, to do all of the things that, you know, unfortunately are not emphasized or considered or, um, you know, in a lot of, in a lot of these, a lot of art spaces um, because of things like white supremacy and capitalism and all of these things. And like, I think that the, I, I think that that is so important, like taking care of yourself as an artist so that you can even have so much more confidence and power showing up to the things that make you oh, yeah. really excited and happy. And then that will come back to you and will show you like, oh, like actually I maybe do know how to teach this thing. Actually, I do know how to, you know, contribute in this way. But if you're only doing it from like running around mad all the time because you're so overwhelmed because your nervous system is so on, you know, yes. on the on the front, um, then um, on the edge, on the front, on the attack, on the what is uh, yeah, um, then you're actually not going to be able to stop and have moments of like. <clears throat> this is how this feels or that wasn't great or whatever. So mm -hmm. calming and taking care is, is one of those small steps in this long, longer journey. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And just allowing yourself time to think. I know that that was one of my hardest things, especially in grad school was because I was so active in all the volunteer things. I was so active in school itself. Mm -hmm. I was always teaching. I was always in the studio but I wasn't allowing myself quiet time to mm. allow that inspiration to like spawn. And I got so burnt out that I didn't touch anything for like probably yeah. a good six months to, you know, nine months after. And I, I literally called it like my version of postpartum because mm. it was like I had birthed this thing and <laughs> then it was torn from me or you know to that effect it was, mm -hmm. it was very similar I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean I think that um there's I think it all comes back to like self right and like what's going on in the self um but I think that you know it none of this none of this matters, right? Like it's, it's like, it's like, it doesn't matter what opportunities you make or if you're selling art or if you're running a business or how successful it is or how much money you're bringing in or like whatever, none of it matters if you're like, not okay, <laughs> you know? And, um, I, and so that's something else that I try and emphasize too, is like, there are so many different ways to be an artist in the world and to make money being an artist um and it, it it doesn't have to look in this like very you know industrious patriarchal whatever kind of way that we've been taught capitalist way that we've been taught um and yeah like opening your mind to the possibility can't happen unless there's quiet yeah. unless there's a, a break right um in all the ways for your career for your moves in that way, for the actual practice, for the thing that you're creating, um, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it works in, wall, in all the ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is. It, that's one of the big things that I try to ingrain in my students is mm -hmm. the fact that I understand academia is not <laughs> the best place to foster a sustainable art practice. Mm -hmm. So I try to give them a little bit of leeway and a little bit of room, like be open. I try to be that advocate for them because I knew I, you know, there was a couple of teachers that tried to remind me to take time for myself, take, mm. make sure you're sleeping, make sure you're eating right, mm -hmm. but it's few and far in between. So I always want to be an advocate for my students. Yeah. I think that's really important. Um, mm-hmm. That's great. That's really important. I'm glad that they have you to do that. <laughs> really they, they seem to appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah, I mean, 
I know you've got to run out the door pretty soon. So, <laughs> you have any final thoughts or words of wisdom for anybody? Um, yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, yeah, we talked a little bit about kind of reframing opportunity. Um, what was the other thing that we were going to talk about? Was there something else? Am I, I think thing? so. Um, yeah, like, I think, yeah, just permission, right? Like permission to, to build whatever kind of artistic life that you want and that it's all legitimate, right? Mm -hmm. Like working a nine to five job and doing art on the weekends is legitimate. Like owning an art business where you're selling your work is legitimate. Choosing to work inside your industry as a theater artist and, you know, go to traditional casting calls and be an actor and submit submissions and whatever is legitimate. Choosing to be an actor that creates their own work and puts YouTube videos up is legitimate. Like it's all possible. It's all legitimate. There is no right way. Um, and take inventory and take stock of all the things that you want to do, you know how to do. Um, and, 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 and you will find you will find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And don't feel like that you're alone. That's the big oh, thing. Yeah. If, if you have a thought or you have a question, reach out to somebody that you know mm -hmm. that's in the same field. I guarantee you that they felt the same way. Absolutely. Or they know somebody that has also felt that way. And so just don't suffer alone. <laughs> yeah. And that, yes, exactly. And like, because there's really no, like, we don't need to be suffering. Like we, we don't, we actually don't need to be suffering where exactly. that is again, a myth that's been sold to us. And, you know, it's not going to make your art better to suffer. It's not going to make your life better to suffer. Um, be yes, I couldn't agree more. Find a community. I could not agree more. Um, find a community. You're not alone. And another thing is that everything can change. Yes. You know, there's like, I, you know, there's this fear a lot of the times with the clients, the artists that I work with that like, if it's like, if I make this artistic move now, or if I make this thing and it's forever out there, then like there's a permanency and I can never take it back or I can never go in another direction or I can never decide like, just kidding, I'm not going to sing anymore or like whatever, you know, like, and, and it, I think there's nothing for like, like, like that is not even something that it's very hard to do but not even something that we need to really grapple with because you're going to change as a person and as an artist and as a human and it's okay that all the things and the ways that you want to express yourself might change too yep. you know and what it was easier for you at a certain point in your life is harder for you now and it, you know whatever it's all going to ebb and flow and change yeah um, and that's okay. You know, permission. I mean, as I'm talking about this, and this is like, like, I'm about to, like, legitimately be like, just like, bye to, to this side of my business that I built this creative right. side of my business, because I need a break, you know, like, and some people might be like, what, like, you've got all this momentum, you're making money, you're blah, 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 you have an income, what, like, you know what I mean? And it's like, I don't like, so like there are things that I need to heal. There are other ways that I need to grow if I want to continue in this way. And if I want this to keep going and if I want it to get elevate, you know, and escalate, mm -hmm. um, that I'm not, and I'm not, and I know I'm not ready for, like, I just, and that's okay. You yeah. know, there's, there's no, like no judgment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are perfectly where you need to be at any given time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the journey is what's most important, not that is right. the X on the map. <laughs> exactly. Like the same way that we talk about in art making, how like process can be so revealing to the kind of art you want to make to, you know, your own, you know, the, the process of something can contribute to your own skills and practice and things like that. Like it's the same, same way, career decisions and moves. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I love that. <laughs> thank you for letting me chat today. Yes. Thanks, thanks, thanks for joining me. This was fun. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. Of and course. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. 
You too. Are you done teaching today or no? No, I have another class after this at four. <laughs> well, have a good class. Thanks. Bye. See ya. Bye.